Chammy. I think it's time we talk about Vixen. Hey? You decked me. Remember? Hello everyone and welcome back to what was surprisingly quite a requested video. I have had so many messages from all of you really lovely and generous and kind people asking how I am following our little tumble at Bicton and I've had a lot of people just wanting to know what I've kind of done since, how I was, how Jammy was. So that is what this video is all about. Obviously, it's very easy to talk about my physical injuries. Less so up here, but we will discuss that because Dee Dee has been a helpful pony today, actually, and done a bit of jumping. So if you haven't seen my Bicton cross country vlog, you won't have seen the full because I don't really want to post it all over social media just because it is quite an intense watch. I'm gonna drop it in just now, guys. The footage is gonna be about 20 seconds long, so just skip 20 seconds if you don't want to see it because it will make it easier to talk about afterwards. Eesh. So there we have it. Definitely my worst ever fall. But I've watched the footage back, I've seen it in slow motion, and it was genuinely one of those falls that was just 100% a stupid mistake on my behalf. So I think there are a few factors that went into this, partly because we had done steeplechases and roads and tracks just before, because Bicked and Run as a long format. And when you're doing steeplechases, you're encouraged to go obviously very fast because it was intermediate speed. And the jumps are all, you know, brushed, so they're more forgiving and they're all palisade so they're much more easy to jump flat and fast. So I think partly Jamie and I were both in that headspace and I was pushing for a long one. I was trying to be really confident because it was a big track, trying to ride forward. And unfortunately, the long one just wasn't there. It was just a bit too off. So Jamie made the decision to chip in short. Again, I think she was thinking, you know, we've just jumped five steeplechase fences. That was fine, we got close to them and you just brush on and go flat and over and out. Unfortunately, that was a very big boxy log pile kind of thing and you just can't be getting so close to them so you'll see poor jam tips up she tries to save us with that incredible back end of yours it is wonderful um, but unfortunately we do just tip up and jam doesn't go fully down she goes kind of half down i actually got tangled in the reins and the martingale so a lot of people thought i got dragged by the stirrup but it was actually the reins and the martingale and i did get trodden on quite badly. So I got trodden on on my thigh, trodden on on both shins, but it was my left shin that was the worst one and still causing me a little bit of pain now. I did go to hospital and get it x-rayed because I was really struggling to walk a few days later and there was such a big lump. But thankfully they said it's not broken, although they did, did mention that sometimes hairline fractures take a little while to show up. So they were like, if it's still really bad, come back in a few weeks time because then the hairline fracture might show up. But to my knowledge now, it's not broken and it has started to improve. I can weight bear on it properly. The only thing is that it's got still a big lump and I went for physio the other day as well. Very important to obviously keep on top of everything after you've had a fall, check yourself, check the horse. Um, and the physio told me that muscles can actually calcify so they can start to get like a bit bony. Um, so I have to massage that lump, else I'm going to be left with a lump for the rest of my life. Oh, Jammy, you look like you've already let yourself go following Bicton. What are these? Big old disgusting stable stains. Sorry, I'm embarrassing you. So all in all, Jam did remarkably well. Obviously, it was just her front half that went down. So the only visible injury for Jammy on the day was... You can see just 
there. The scab's actually in the process of coming off, but I'm not one of those people that pick scabs. <laughs> um, she studded herself there, so obviously really tucked her legs in. Now she has, of course, had physio since because I wanted to make sure everything was all right. So I walked her out a couple of times, but didn't want to do a lot with her at all before the physio came. And she came a few days ago, Jamie, and you were tight, bless her. So she was quite tight in her neck going down here, also in her pole, which is really unsurprising because she proper goes down on her face, tucks her head and neck right in, poor girl. So Nikita sorted that for you, didn't she? We'd had the ETT treatment, so it gets right deep into the muscles. And then the other little niggle we found, bizarrely, was right here on her hip. So again, this could have been because she went down, obviously the horse's muscles are connected all over the place. So she may well have pulled something here by straining so much in front. So Nikita did a lot of work and we did get a nice muscle release with that, but it was so hot to touch after and it was a little bit filled, but it's gone down. It was so funny, there was like a circle here. Um, so Nikita's coming back in a few days time to treat her again. And then we're gonna have one little confidence jump, Jammy, before you go on your break. <laughs> break time speaking of confident jumps about time we come to the star of the show my new badminton pony or to be badminton pony we should say we've got to keep you fit and sound and safe until next may it's always a bit of a stress when you qualify for something so far in advance because you're like horses oh, can go so wrong anywho touch wood we're not gonna not gonna think about that so, my darling, darling Dee Dee, and I want to partly talk in this video about her epic cross-country round because I feel it was very much overshadowed by the fall and I do actually have my full round from Equireal. So at the end of this video, I'm going to show you the whole of that and do a little voiceover to talk through and also try and build a bit of confidence. That's what's very much worrying me at the moment is the psychological aspect of having that fall. I'm very much not a professional, so I know that professionals literally never fall, get back on and go cross country again on their second ride. So that's one of the many differences between professionals and I is that falls <laughs> dwell on me a lot more than they do for them. So it has been a bit of a process trying to build my confidence back up. As I said, re-watching things is actually really helpful, specifically not re-watching the fall, which is why I don't want to slap it all over social media. Obviously I've shown it twice on YouTube now, but that's for kind of educational purposes. But I'm really trying to not rewatch it too many times because I don't want that burnt into my brain. So today I did actually have my first jump since Bicton. Obviously I did the show jumping with Dee the next day, which was incredibly emotional and difficult, but there were so many factors on that day. So I'm trying to not let that worry me too much. It was a hard atmosphere and it was obviously so raw that I was kind of telling myself that was why I found it so difficult. Anyway, today was my first jump with Didi and we decided to do a little grid and made it just so easy for us. Everything was spaced out right. I trotted in, there were placing poles, so there wasn't too much to go wrong. And I just wanted to go out there and do as much as I felt comfortable with. I'm actually going off and filming something very important tomorrow and I've got lots of filming to do in November which you guys can't actually know about yet but you will know about kind of shortly. I do have to really be on my A game and really have to have a lot of confidence so that's why I kind of potentially rushed jumping again today because I did want to make sure that my feet had left the ground ahead of tomorrow. I think I have just got to be conscious this winter that I need to take every day as it comes and not feel like I can just jump back straight to where I was. So I spoke to Cam the other day on the phone and he said to do loads of trot jumping. So once Jammy's better, that's what we're gonna do. Some trot jumping with placing poles, let Jam find her feet, keep it all small, probably just cross poles for a bit and gradually build that confidence back up. But that is the plan. That's how we're all doing. Thankfully, we are both more than okay. I think we were quite lucky with that fall. It could have gone horrifically wrong. Again, I am just lucky and thankful that I ride ponies because had Jam have been a bigger horse, we'd have been even closer to that jump and maybe she would have found her fifth leg to get her up 
so quickly. Anyway, we shan't dwell because we are going to watch Dee Dee's full cross country round, thanks to Ekpa Rio. She's honestly become such a diva since qualifying for badminton. She just thinks she is absolute top dog, quite rightly so. <laughs> right, thanks for watching guys. Enjoy Dee's cross country round. I live, love, love you and I'll see you very soon. You're seriously gonna wanna subscribe because there's some incredible content coming that I can't tell you about. Bye. Ooh. Okay, cross country time. So luckily this is with Dee Dee, so we're not gonna see her fly back and jump that huge start box like Jammy. Watch my uh, previous vlogs if you wanna see that. Anyway, off we go. So the ground conditions at this point in the day were certainly better than when I went with Jam because we were a lot earlier. But still a little bit slippy. It did start absolutely chucking it down. You can see the rain's <laughs> about to begin now. So some of this footage is going to be a little rainy. But we head on to fence two. And Dee's one of those horses that really wants to play it safe going cross country. So you'll see a lot of the time she would much rather go close and chip in. Whoops, saying that, we then have a nice forward flyer to fence four. Down the hill, this one we really chip in, and Cameron did warn us that because it's actually a lot more of a hill than you can tell there, you can sort of gauge it a little bit more. Um, but the horses just want to see a little bit what's on the other side. So he did warn us we might chip in and that's exactly what we did. Had to take this corner really steady, make sure I had a lot of outside rain. But she flew through there, easy peasy. This one, you know when you know a photographer's at a fence and you end up riding it really badly. Went for a long one and Dee was like, don't be ridiculous. Anywho, that's fine, she sorted us out and uh, off we went then to the coffin combination. I was really impressed with myself for riding forward, but then <laughs> we had that little stumble on landing. It's always when I try and ride more forward and be more confident that I seem to have these mishaps. And that that's what makes me pull in the future. Anywho, thankfully we're all right. Then we come to this one and I'm not gonna lie, this was the combination I was most nervous for on course. So I really had to get D back in the middle there because I could just see we were off it. And I just, I, I didn't fancy taking a flyer on such a steep hill. And then <laughs> this is actually where the rain really started, as you might be able to tell because the poor Equiril cameras are starting to get pretty battered. Like just look at it landing in the water there. I remember as I was going into the water, I checked my watch because this was one of my last minute markers. And I looked and I just couldn't see the screen. There was just so much rain on it. So I had to wait till I was coming up this hill so I could like kind of wipe it a bit and check it again. Over the big tractor fence. That's quite a beefy one, especially for, for a 90. It's very full up and square, but Dee Dee did a good job. And then Big Tim were quite mean here. So we come to the penultimate fence, this one, which was actually very angular and quite upright so I really respected that got a little pop over it and then I got the best flying stride to the last and it was just such an amazing feeling so so proud of Dee Dee and hoping that she gives me this good a ride around batters thank you at Creole for this beautiful footage mm -hmm.